Hey everybody, and this is the third video in my Doc 2 Law series. This is going to be a topic I feel like should have been the opening to the series, but I got a bit carried away. Uh, this is going to be me discussing the Doc 2 8th Doc Adventure books. I feel like I should cover these as a whole, as a lot of the lore I'm going to be talking about is going to come from these, as well as the Virgin New Adventures, which will also have a separate video to themselves. This story begins all the way back in 1973 when a company called Target acquired the rights to make novelizations of previous Doctor Who stories. These would be total novelizations of TV stories that had already been seen, and for many this was many children's first window into Doctor Who. These novels continued all the way up until the show's cancellation in 1989, when Virgin Publishing bought the license to publish the books. Now, there was usually a couple of years delay on when they would make these novels and these stories from when they aired on TV. So, going into the 1990s, the late Seventh Doctor's era got some treatment being made into novelizations. In these novelizations, the difference between the previous Target books and the Virgin Publishing books was that certain elements were added to the books by the original writers of the scripts expanding on certain concepts that weren't in the original story. Now, these stories and these additions proved so popular that around the time that they finished novelising the TV series, they decided that they were going to make something called The Virgin New Adventures. Now, I'll do a bigger video on The Virgin era in a different video, but a um, quick explanation is they did The Missing Adventures with Doctors 1-6, to and they did the new adventures with the Seventh Doctor. Now, these are notably more adult-themed than the TV show, and they were rather successful. All this came to an end in 1996, when they lost the licence to the modern show, because BBC wanted it back. So they did final two stories, which are critically acclaimed and now amongst the most rare stories to find. With the Seventh Doctor story, Long Barrow serving as an unofficial prequel to the TV movie, and the Dying Days serving as Virgin's only venture into the Ape Doctor's era. Now, you can try and buy these stories if you want to, but uh, I think I'd rather read the PDF files, you know? Not to worry, as BBC saw the value and profit making possibilities in making some more original Doctor Who books, as the BBC Books Department took over and started making original stories. Now, this story started with a very safe option, a multi doc story written by a Doctor Who legend, Terence Dix, as we got the Eight Doctors. As you can already see from an aesthetic point of view, these books were not much to look at compared to their beautifully drawn counterparts, but the content on the inside was just as good, if not a little more, contained in PG. Over eight years, they made 73 stories, starting with the Eight Doctors and ending with the Gallifrey Chronicles. So technically, a year later, there was one more Ape Doctor adventure called Fear Itself. This was technically published under the past Doctor's range, though. Now, during this time, the BBC also made books of Doctors 1 to 7, calling them the Past Doctor Adventures, or PDAs. Now, initially, it was clear that they were trying to distance themselves from the original New Adventures from Virgin, but as it went on, certain concepts overlapped and they ended up becoming part of the same continuity essentially. Virgin Publishing's unique selling point was how edgy and adult it was. The Ape Doctor BBC books, their selling point was a continuous story arc. Something that was definitely present in the Virgin Publishing books but was not the main focus and was not the unique selling point. BBC Books Ranger made a distinct attempt to make fleshed out characters as companions in these books with some examples being Sam Jones previously being a progressive rights activist, and her story of her being split into two people. Something I imagine helped Stephen Moffat out of his Clara arc later on. Its main achievement in terms of story writing can be found in the War in Heaven story arc, which I covered in my previous video. Well, you're probably asking yourself, Josh, if it's so good, why is it no longer around? Well, the answer, unfortunately, blessing and a curse, is the modern series of Doctor Who. The publishing their final official book in 2005, BBC Books stated that they wanted to focus more 
on making modern Doctor Who stories. And that's what they did. They brought out the Doctor Who book range for the Ninth Doctor, and later on the Tenth Doctor. And of course, in 2006, we got that brief release of Fear Itself, but this was just to uh, wind up all the story arcs. Now, these stories weren't bad per se, but they were definitely meant for a more childish audience and weren't made for the family audience that the other books were. Now, unfortunately, this is still the status quo at BBC today, but we did get some re-releases of some of the Eighth Doctor and Past Doctor adventures in 2013, with Earthworld getting its re-release. Now, would you look at that cover? But there we have it, a little delve into BBC books and their original run of Ape Doctor novels. Now, what you have on screen is all of them, all 72, I believe. I am going to flash on screen a few of my personal recommendations. But yes, that's me for today. I hope you've enjoyed this video, I hope it's been informative, and I will be back again very soon doing a similar video for the Virgin Publishing range.